Hello, I'm Philippa. I'm an artist on YouTube. In this video, I'm trying watercolors for the first time in many, many years. I've made several videos before where I try something new for the first time. I've graffitied a wall, I have painted a pregnant belly, and in this video, I'm trying watercolors. And for that, I've just chosen to paint myself in the studio, you know, something that uh, we kind of see in every video in this channel. So you guys also have a way to quickly evaluate it, you know, if it kind of looks like something <laughs> similar to what you see on the screen right now, then I think I've done a good job. Last time I tried watercolors, I was in art school and that was about 10 years ago. I've never liked watercolors, that's the truth. So I'm someone with zero experience, I would say on watercolors as a whole but, you know bear with me watercolor fans this is outside of my comfort zone but i'm really excited to try it i think that watercolors require a lot of patience that i don't have i'm someone who is not afraid of starting a drawing straight with a pen i really like to you know do one stroke and that's it that's what we got rather than you know doing endless pencil drawings and erasing parts of the graphite and things like that and working in layers so obviously you know watercolors is not a natural medium for me i like acrylics i like oils i like pastels i like just things that you can work on quite fast and don't need to kind of overlay um, a million times over. Wow, look at this. This is another annoying thing of watercolors that you just can't expect your surface to keep flat. But actually, once I realized that the paper goes back to its original flat surface pretty quickly after the paint dries, then I actually got strangely into it. <laughs> There's a reason why I decided to give watercolor a try. They do have some pros, like they are pretty amazing to look at. I think watercolor works are, are some of my favorites. And they also have the advantage of being really portable. I'm going on a trip very soon where I would like to use watercolors to paint some uh, landscapes and animals or, you know, things that I might see during my travels. So. It feels like this is a really good moment to get back to watercolors and experiment a little bit with them, understand, you know, how I can make it work, especially, uh, you know, if I want to paint while traveling. The key reason why watercolors need so much preparation, like a perfect undersketch and a million different layers of paint, is that they're not as forgiving as other mediums. There's a key difference between all different types of paint in the world of art supplies and watercolors. And that is transparency. With any other type of paint, usually you'd be able to revisit a painting, which means you can at any time decide that you want to add something extra on top of what you have on the paper, on the canvas, and it would show on top of whatever you have previously there. With watercolors though, you'll only be able to actually layer darker tones on top of light. So you really need to plan things carefully from the start because at any point you go with a slightly darker shade, there is no reverting it back to light again. <laughs> and this becomes problematic very early on if we haven't carefully planned our painting. I ended up repainting most of my canvases, but this time in a super small size and in watercolors, rather than acrylics. This was actually a fun exercise because I've had to simplify a lot of what I uh, did previously on the canvases, but this time in a much smaller space because I'm working on a, an A4 paper, which is like the regular size for a photocopy sheet. I got to really appreciate all the paintings that I've completed in the past year or so by just going over them and repainting them in this new medium. I really feel like the process of painting with watercolors is very unique. With watercolors, you really have to work your way through the lighter tones first, then the mid-tones, and only finally the shadows. The result is that you end up with a really pale surface <laughs> for a really long time until you see any interesting contrasts. It does take time, uh, basically, for the painting to start coming to life, since the darker areas are usually what makes a drawing pop. With any other paint type, you'll see the light and dark contrasts 
much earlier in the process and that usually gives at least to me <laughs> some sense of gratification at an early stage and that tends to help me to keep dedicating my time and my attention to the painting now with watercolors it did take me a lot longer to complete this drawing than it would have taken me doing this with any other paint again with with gouache with acrylic with oil wouldn't matter uh, i think with watercolors part of the reason why they are taking me so long to complete is that i didn't really feel the drawing was any good until like midway the whole process actually i think right now is when I finally started enjoying what I was doing because I you know, start to see some things take shape, I'm starting to paint these darker leaves and that already creates some sort of you know, drama in, in the whole painting scene. But it took me about four days actually to get to this stage, so I was working really, really slowly. It also helped me that I was painting the same environment that I was in. This is my art studio where I do most of my projects, I do art, YouTube videos of course, and I actually filmed the entire process of setting up this studio space where you're seeing me work, which is basically a room in my flat in Barcelona where I live. So if you're interested you can actually check out this video where I basically built this room from scratch from just an empty space into how it looks now and, and what I'm representing on, on this painting as well. I'll make sure that I link that video in on the screen right now as well as on the description. So if you want, you can see what I've done with it uh, and maybe get inspired. I mean, painting myself in the studio while I am sitting in here means that I can look around and see how the light actually works on the leaves of my plants, on the different elements that I have on the table, how those shadows are created. And it's much more useful, I think, to actually see things in real life and how those shapes and light and color, how they're perceived rather than only having one photo reference to rely on. You can see that in my painting, the perspective is much more angular than the photos that I've taken and on which I'm actually basing the painting. I actually chose to show a lot more of the room than what the camera allowed me to fit in the frame. And I think generally that is how I personally prefer to paint. I really enjoy having both a photo as well as real life setting to work from as a reference. And usually I have them side by side. So I typically use my phone to take reference photos. It's super helpful when you have that static bi-dimensional reference but also at the same time i hate being restricted to only what the photo shows you so my ideal way of drawing or painting is to paint from life but then also taking some photos as well so i can keep them with me and reference them alongside what i'm seeing in the real world i mean if you're watching this i wonder if you feel the same or whether you prefer only looking at a photo or only drawing from life. I find it really interesting that everyone seems to have their own preference or method. It's fascinating. While I was painting this, I also was watching some watercolor tutorials on YouTube that roughly guided me through how to apply paint and avoid rookie mistakes. Still, these only served me really to realize that I had made a mistake after I've made it. <laughs> so I'm not sure how useful it is to kind of try to learn from someone else. My advice to others just starting with watercolors is to experiment and actually the key thing I think with watercolors that I'm finding is you should work fast. <laughs> it's the opposite than what I've done but ensuring that the brush is wet and has enough water in it for the whole little section that you're trying to fill during that period is really the one way to make sure that you don't end up with weird effects happening with your watercolors. I've had a bunch of those and I think time is a really important thing. It's really important to keep your pace and work quickly. It took me about two weeks to finish this painting and I've actually dedicated a full hour to painting every single day. So overall it feels like I spent much more time avoiding painting than actually doing it. If you're honest, doesn't that happen to you as well? Yeah, honestly, I just assumed that that's the case with everyone. You may have seen from when I was unpacking my new watercolor set that I'm using watercolors from Van Gogh. I've seen a lot of channels actually recommend these as well. They can be pricey actually, but I think they're probably good ones to start with since 
I've been finding them relatively easy to work, even for a complete beginner, they seem nice. Alright, this is when I started lifting my washi tape. This is all so satisfying, half terrifying as well, but because in some places the washi tape actually got so glued to the paper that it was lifting part of the paper fibers, I got really really scared. So I had to do it super super slowly and carefully, which felt like basically torture, but finally, finally, this painting is complete. I feel like I need a lot more practice with watercolors. But overall, this is a very successful first try, I think. I can't wait to do a few more of these because because there's so much more that you can do with watercolors. So stay tuned, please make sure to hit like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. I'm so happy when I hear back and see that for some people they enjoyed my videos. It's something that I've actually put quite a lot of effort and time into, so let me know if you do and see you in the next one.